Continuing on from the great flood, mankind begins to multiply on the earth. Genesis 10 lists 70 descendants from the three sons of Noah. This list doesn't include every descendant that would come, but highlights important people groups and nations. While Genesis 10 for many is a boring list of names and descendants from Noah's three sons, when we map these names an interesting view of the world is given. As we read through more of the Bible, these names and locations act as the very foundation of all the future nations as well as future prophecies, acting as a template when referring to regions and places. This is why understanding Genesis 10 will help unlock a lot of the Bible and help readers visualise future wars and prophecies. Starting with the sons of Japheth. The eldest, Gomer, is located in the north, at the southern point of the Black Sea. Gomer is also mentioned in Ezekiel 38 as an enemy of God's people. Magog is probably the most famous descendant of Japheth, due to its mention in Revelation. It simply means the land of Gog, with Gog meaning mountain. They are later linked on to the Scythians, and because of this many people put Magog in modern day Russia. However, a more accurate location for them would be in central Turkey. Madai is also a reference to the Medes, who later become the Medo-Persian Empire. This is the empire Daniel would be a hostage in and is where King Cyrus the Great comes from. The modern day name would be Persia or Iran. Yavan means Ionia or Greece. These people actually started off on the western coast of Turkey and then later expanded into what we know to be ancient Greece. Tubal and Meshech are often mentioned together and are also located in the region around the Black Sea. Tyrus most likely refers to the Thracians. Japheth's grandsons include the descendants of Gomer, Ashkenaz, which is located in modern-day Armenia, towards the Caspian Sea, Riphath, we don't know much about these people, and Togomar, which is also associated with the northern region close to Gomer. The descendants of Yavan are also known as the coastline people and include Elisha, is either located in and around the islands in the Aegean Sea, and or includes Cyprus. Tarshish is also known as Spain, and a saying is linked with them, the ships of Tarshish, which suggests these people were great shipbuilders and traveled far up the Mediterranean. I also found out that the word tin, which comes from the Greek, might come from the word Tarshish, as they were great traders, trading silver, tin, and lead. However, they also have a link to Britain, as during the ancient times, Britain was the main supplier of tin. This is a lot of speculation, so please don't take this as biblical fact. Kittim is another word for Cyprus, and Dodinium most likely refers to the island of Rhodes, and possibly the ancient city of Troy. Next, the sons of Ham are Cush, which is located in modern-day Ethiopia. There is also a region in Mesopotamia called Cush. Mesopotamia meaning the land between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates. The reason for this might have something to do with his youngest son Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. Cush is also referred to a place in Arabia, most likely because these people would have travelled across the Red Sea and settled on both sides. In Numbers 12 verse 1, Moses' wife was a Cushite, most likely from the Arabian side. Mizraim is the Hebrew word for Egypt. Put refers to Libya in North Africa, and Canaan, the fourth son of Ham which we have already been introduced to in Genesis 9, and many people know because of the curse Noah put upon him. He was located in the Holy Land, where Israel would go and settle. To find out more about what happened between Noah, Ham and Canaan, check out my previous video, Noah's Great Flood. Ham's grandsons include, from Cush comes Seba, this is where we get the Sibians. Havilah, most likely in southern Arabia or near Somalia. Sabta and Rama, most likely in Arabia. Sabteka, we do not know. And Nimrod, without doubt is the most well-known man out of the list in Genesis 10. So well known was he back then that a proverb was named after him, like Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. 
His kingdom began in Babel, which later became Babylon and soon expanded. Another city to mention would be Nineveh, which becomes the capital of Assyria. Both Babylon and Assyria would play a prominent part in the future nation of Israel. There is a lot more to say about Nimrod, which I will do in the next video. And although the Bible is brief on its introducing Nimrod and what happens at the Tower of Babel, the book of Jasher gives a very interesting picture of what was taking place at this time, which again we will go into next. From Mizraim comes Ludim, which we get the word Lydia from. This is not the same as another Lud, but this Lydia was most likely in Northern Africa. Animim, we do not know anything about. Liabim comes the word Libya. Naphtahim is in Egypt, probably around Memphis. Pafrusim is Petros, likely south of Egypt. Kaslahim is in Northern Africa, and out of which comes Captorim and the Philistines. Captorium is most likely Crete, and it's from here where the Philistines came from, meaning immigrant. This is because the Philistines came from Crete to Israel and later would become a big problem for them. From Canaan, we get a long list of 11 sons. This is because these people were the closest to Israel and meant the most to the biblical story. Again, this emphasizes that this isn't a complete list of every single descendant from Noah's three sons, but instead highlights important nations and people going forward. Sidon is where we get the city of Sidon from, commonly mentioned together with Tyre. Heth is where we get the Hittites from. Jebusite, these people inhabited the city of Jebus, which later became the city of Jerusalem. Amorites lived on both sides of the Jordan River. Girgashites and Hivites lived inside Canaan. Aki, Sini, Avad, Zemari, and Hamath most likely got absorbed into other tribes over time as when we get to Moses, we do not hear of them again. They were most likely located where Lebanon is today. The great grandsons of Ham were, from Ramah came Sheba and Dedan, both of which are located in Arabia. Finally, the sons of Shem. What we find with Shem's descendants is the Bible focuses in on a specific line leading to Abraham. But first, Shem's sons were Elam, which is located in Persia and has a link to Noah's prophecy of enlarging Japheth and dwelling in the tents of Shem, while also not blessing Ham and cursing Canaan. As Elam, Shem's son, and Media, Japheth's son, unite to form the Persian Empire which later overthrows the Babylonian Empire, a descendant of Ham. Asher is Assyria, Arphaxed are the Chaldeans, and Lud, whose name also means Lydia, and comes from Asia Minor, where that region would later be named after him. Finally, Aram is located in Syria. The grandsons of Shem were, from Arphaxed came Salah, and from Aram came Uz, which is the country of Job, probably east and southeast of Palestine, somewhere in the Arabian desert. Ho, Gether, and Mash all most likely settled in and around the Arabian desert. From Salah, we get Eber, or sometimes called Heber, which many people think we get the word Hebrew from. I have seen somewhere, according to Jewish legends, during the construction of the Tower of Babel, Eber was the only person or tribe not to participate and was opposed to it. And according to the legend, when God confused the languages, Eber's tongue didn't change and they still spoke the original global language back to Adam. Personally, I do believe this. Looking into the ancient Hebrew alphabet and what certain words mean when broken down into the symbols used, it's clear God's hand was at work. But this is a topic for another video, but you can also check out what I mean on my Instagram where I post about this. From Eber, we get Peleg. Peleg's name means division because the earth was divided in those days. This could either mean two things. It was divided after the Tower of Babel, where God confused the languages, or there was a sort of world war between the descendants of Noah during this time, with perhaps one group at war with another. 
The Bible doesn't say this, but other texts, such as the book of Jasher, seem to suggest Cush and Nimrod united the sons of Ham to go to war with the sons of Japheth. This could be the reason why Eber named his son Peleg, referring to the division at this time. From Eber, we also get Joktan. Joktan's sons become the leaders of the Arabian tribes between Sheba and Meshar. What we can start to see when we map Genesis 10 is a clear picture of where Noah's descendants went. Japheth inhabited the northern regions of the world. Ham went southwest to Africa and Shem inhabited the Arabian Peninsula. The reason Genesis 10 is important is that these names and tribes are mentioned throughout the Bible, even being mentioned in the end times. Therefore, if we hope to understand both the biblical stories of the past and also the future, we need to understand where these people groups are located and who they are. It's also important to mention that what we see here is a snapshot of these locations where the people went shortly after the flood and the Tower of Babel, but people move around and spread out. A notable example of this is Ashkenaz, who is thought to have travelled to Germany and is where we get the term Ashkenazi Jew. Also, it is theorised that one of Shem's descendants travelled far to the east and settled into what we know as China today. This is because the Chinese writing style, similar to ancient Hebrew, uses picture and symbols to display words, with words like flood or boat, when broken down, having a clear link to Noah and the Great Flood. However, before humanity was spread across the face of the world, one man in his rebellion against God united humanity under one king and one city. His name was Nimrod. The city he built would attempt to reach into the heavens themselves and declare the power of man. But instead, destruction hit mankind again. Not in the form of a flood, but God sends mass confusion, causing every tribe to forget the language of their forefathers and split into their own tongues and nations. To find out what happens next, please subscribe and give the video a like, as next time we will explore who was Nimrod and what hope is left for humanity if again we have rebelled against God. And remember, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as lions.